It's a brand new season, a brand new year, a brand new chapter, and a brand new era for Norton High School Hockey. And what better way to start off than against your biggest rival? It's the Norton Lancers and Foxborough Warriors scoring off to open the 2018-19 season on Ellison's coverage of Hockey Night in Norton. Hello folks and welcome into the FSC for the first time this season. I'm Javik Blake alongside Tim Crowley and the Lancers and their brand new head coach Jay Thabito have quite the matchup here on opening night as they take on a Foxborough team that's coming off their best season in team history. A year that included a 10 win, 22 point season, both highs for the program. But tonight the Lancers look for redemption from last year's 3-2 loss which continue Norton's downward spiral to end their season. Their losses in seven of their last eight games. But it's a new look Lancer team with a new man at the helm who's facing his former team. And Tim, what can we expect out of the Lancers tonight? Well, I think this is a big night for the Lancers. Getting off of last season and really kicking off this season. And that all starts with Brendan Hayden. Had a big offseason for himself, competing in the NA 3HL. Unheard of for a kid at his age. Already has four years of varsity experience. Pretty much was the leader for the team last year. And it's going to be all about him once again tonight. And it will be pretty much all about him. He's main offensive man last year, 22 points a season ago. But he's coming off an 11-point fall season with the Cape Cod Islanders in the NA3HL. And currently he stands at just needing one goal, two assists, and two points to break all three of the Norton High School scoring records currently all held by Jake Palin. And if they can get the puck to him tonight, a lot of big things are going to happen for the Lanchers. Well, I think it's already especially against your biggest rival, you already have enough motivation to score, but when you have the record books on the line, it's all worth it tonight. And the man in net tonight for the new Norton Lancers will be Mitchell the Rector, the new man in net. He went 1-2-0 in three starts last year, but he shined in preseason the game with multiple highlight reels, save, including a diving stop with a stick against North Attleboro last weekend. And we saw him a little bit shaky in the early going last year, but he took real solid in the preseason. Yeah, and I think this is going to have to be the biggest adjustment for the Lancers this season. You're coming off of you know, what we like to call facing the franchise player in, tr in Triton Dose Race. Um, when, the, when the shots weren't there last year, when the opportunities weren't there offensively, it was Triton who kept them in the games. There's some big, big skates to fill tonight, but I think Mitch is going to be up to the challenge. And behind the bench helping Mitch throughout this whole process is Triton Dose Race himself, an assistant for this Lancer team. And Mitch has looked real solid all preseason, and Triton hoping that continues in the regular season. Yeah, obviously any situation where you can have the one-on-one one type of support that Triton can provide in this case, it's going to be huge for any team. Not only to mention the whole team dynamic of this, these are all kids who have played with Triton before, they know what he wants to get done on the ice, and it can only help the Lancers this season. And one of the big things for the Lancers this season coming into this year is a whole lot of depth on this team. Yeah, they do. We saw that a lot last year where, you know, those first two lines really drove this team, but they got tired late in games. We saw a lot of second period, third period goals where they kind of faltered at the end. If they can keep these guys healthy, keep them fresh, fresh legs on the ice, it's going to be a great year. They have those three good lines, those two good defensive lines, but a new man in town on that first line will be Jared Flukinger, coming into the year after spending the fall with the South Shore Kings 16U team. And while he's not the fastest kid in the ice, he uses his 5-foot, 9-inch, 200-pound frame to establish the forecheck, and he'll be anchoring that first line wing in his very first game in a Lancer jersey. When you look, at the, you look at the talent that the AAU and all these travel teams bring now, there's no one better around as far as hockey goes than the South Shore Kings. So Jared's obviously here for a reason. I expect some dominance tonight out of him. And on the other side of things for Foxborough, they're coming in tonight in the heels of the best season in Foxborough hockey history. And they're led by senior defenseman Brendan Tully, who had 37 points a, senior, a season ago with 18 goals and 19 assists. And we saw him really be the focal point of every offensive play for Foxborough a year ago. Yeah, I mean, every team's going to have that one player. Um, like I said, Norton last year, it was Triton. So you got to find a way to limit, almost like the Bill Belichick style method, don't let their best player beat you. Find a way, if you have to have two guys shade him wherever side he goes, do whatever it takes. Don't let him beat you tonight. And we saw that in the line charts tonight. Joe Giuliano sticking to that second line. Jay Thabato's putting him there. And he was shut down by the Lancers last year. But he'll have to match up, match up tonight against the new Lancer in town. John Gagir coming over from Coyle Cassidy and Billy McCarthy on that first line. And they're hoping that McCarthy and Gagir are able to establish that four check on the first line, which allows Joe Giuliano to get some chance on that second line. Yeah, I feel like I'm already in like the college season where we got a bunch of guys that transfer and in, maybe ring hunting a little bit. Um, but, you know, I think these guys, I mean, I mean, Coyle Cassidy, they're still around some of the best competition in the state of Massachusetts. So, I mean, they're obviously, like we said, all these guys that are new to the team, they're here for a reason. I think they're going to make an impact tonight. And the big man in net tonight will be Espen Rieger. We saw his downfall last year. He was playing pucks out of his own net, and he did it frequently and led to a lot of offensive chances 
on the other side for opposing teams. But he looked fantastic in their final preseason tune-up against Hopkinton, a Division II team that went to the playoffs last year, allowing only one five-on-five goal. That game ended in a 2-2 tie, and at the very end, Hopkinton scoring with their goalie pull, but Espen Rieger looked fantastic, and if he plays up to his game tonight, the Lancers can be in for a lot of trouble. That's right, and he's still a young kid. I mean, he was starting on varsity as a sophomore last year. I think the bright lights might have scared him a little bit this year, but now he's got some experience under his belt. Norton's going to have to be aggressive and find some ways to be creative offensively if they want to score against Rieger tonight. And the final thoughts before we get into the action, what do the Lancers need to do tonight in order to come out with a victory? Well, I think the hands of Norton's all tonight. If they're going to win, it has to be because of Mitchell Director. He has to have a Triton-style game and really be just money between the pipes. Second thing, we saw this a lot out of Norton last year where first couple periods, they looked really slow offensively, weren't getting the shots. If they can be offensively aggressive tonight, make opportunities that they weren't able to in the past, that's going to be the key to their win tonight. And it'll be the Lancers against the Foxborough Warriors, a rivalry that has been the closest the Lancers have ever played in their short history as a revitalized program. So it'll be the Norton Lancers and the Foxborough Warriors coming up next right here on Hockey Night in Norton. Stick with us, folks. This is LS. Welcome inside our broadcast. I'm David Queen. As we'll get ready to go, the puck is dropped and we're underway. Bellingham kicked this one off. That one high in the air. This is LSM. 1-0 the score, and if he can do it this place, the Lancer fan section ready to erupt. This one thrown on towards net. In front, headed, and, and! We're all tied up! 77 minutes! Stop here, looking to pass. Passes to the outside, caught, and it's intercepted! Feeds it back, this one's tipped away. Baker on the move, puts up the lamp, and that one's good. As that one's over to Gallagher. He'll settle this one down, looking for a shot. That one! Put home, Brendan Hayden! Got the 18 headed in front for Mario Harrison. Sends it in, the Lancers take a three-point advantage. Welcome back into the Foxborough Sports Center, folks. David Blake alongside Tim Crowley. And Tim, we're getting ready for a gigantic matchup here to open the season. Yeah, I definitely feel back in the hockey season. I'm freezing cold. It smells like a hockey rink. But, um, you know, that all goes out the window once the game starts, so we're ready to go. I'm excited. Are you excited? We're ready to go here. Starting in tonight for the Norton Lancers, it'll be Mitchell Director, the senior. Four games played last year. Won a 1-2 and two record, an 835 save percentage, and a 3.77 goals against the average. On the other side of things opposing him will be Espen Rieger, the senior goalie. 20 games in net last year, a 10-8-2 record, good with an 871 save percentage, a 2.75 GA, and one shutout on the season. In the center dot for the Lancers is Patrick Donahue. Opposing him is Kirk Leach, and we are underway. The Lancers winning the opening faceoff, sending this one down. Nice taken by Brendan Tully, the senior, playing this one forward. Cross looking to dish out a big hit, doesn't get it. Kirk Leach inside the slot, blocked by a few Lancers. If you plays on the back end, the Lancers trying to get it out of their own zone, kept in by Leach. Donahue sliding into the boards on the far side. Checked by Cross. And this one fanning its way all the way back to Billy McCarthy. Who slides it off the near side boards and goes all the way down the ice. Brendan Telly to pick it up at his own end. 4.28 to go here. Just getting this one underway. Telly going past everybody. The slot pack. He shot from the slot going right into the mitt of Mitchell Director. 14.21 left in that one. And the speed of Brendan Telly really showing there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think some of the skates we might still be a little bit slippery. A lot of a couple of slips, a couple of big hits on the first possession, but overall not bad to start. Sebastian Ricketts in there for Foxborough as they win the face off of their own net. A tip out in front. That one goes just wide. Flukinger able to grab it in the corner. Giuliano standing there in a spot. He'll let Bertuman get it. Sebastian Ricketts controlling it in the corner. Tied up with Giuliano. Now Billy McCarthy goes to grab it below the whistle. And an arm raised in the air. And it'll be a charging penalty against number 15, Billy McCarthy. It's a great chance early on to learn what we're going to see from the Lancer defense this year. Going on the penalty kill less than a minute into the game. This is going to put Director to a test early. And the pace off, though, won by the Lancers. First power play opportunity of the season. This one lofted on towards net, grabbed by Mitchell Director, and we'll get yet another face-off in the third shot of the night already for the Foxborough Warriors. 
10 seconds gone to the penalty. And the Lancer penalty kill last year, one of their strengths, killed at about 85% last season with this faceoff. One all the way back to Matt Tully, the freshman, sending this one in front of slot shot, going just wide. Kirk Leach's shot going just off the stick of Cross as that one goes out of the zone. And Foxborough having to retreat. Matt Tully skates all the way back into his own zone. 135 left on the power play for Foxborough. He'll hand it off to Tully, who brings it straight up down the center of the ice. As at the point now in the low, Dots looks to send it back towards the middle as that shot goes just wide off the stick of Brady Daly. Matt Tully walks the line, the shot in on net, trying to go up and high. And McClellan sends it wide, cross. At the far side, Gagir poking at it. It's Foxborough and Gagir. McClellan controlling this one back towards the slot, that one goes just wide. Off the stick of Kirk Leach. Giuliano played off his man, and now we'll get a whistle. 12.59 left in the first period, tied at zero, the net going off its moorings. And Tim, what have you seen so far for this Lancer defense? Well, they've played tough. I mean, they've pretty much played the entire start of the game in their own defensive zone. Foxborough's getting a lot of shots off, but they haven't been able to capitalize yet. No one's got to find a way to get the puck out of their own zone. 54 seconds left from the power play. The Lancers going for a last second line change coming into things. They tried to get number 18, John Brennan, into things, but instead they're going to have to keep Joey Giuliano out on the ice. The captain was asked to play a whole lot of minutes last year as Warner now exits the faceoff dot in there for the Lancers is their captain, Brendan Hayden. Played back to McGinnis. Whiffs on the shot. The Lancers are able to send it all the way down ice. Joey Fasolino sending it down. Starting the rush is Ricketts, sending this one down towards the far side. It's Jack Watts controlling it. Tied up there on the boards, losing his stick is Lorden as that one continues to go down the ice. A great hip check from John Gagir. Able to knock the puck free, lost the puck for a second. Director coming way out of his own net. And we'll get yet another whistle. Jamie, I'm going to want to keep an eye on Brendan Hayden after that face-off draw. Looks a little weak coming up on his left side. So with 12.29 left in this one, we'll get a face-off on the far side dot. It looks like we might be having a penalty come. As Vukadro will now go to the box as well. So a bench minor assessed. Dracoli going to the box for the Lancers. Now a big five on three opportunity for 23 seconds here with 12.30 to go in the first period. Foxborough controlling the faceoff, sending this back up. Talk to Brendan Tully. Playing it to his brother Matt Tully. The shot blocked by Gagir. Ronnie McClellan controlling this one. Sends it back up to Tully at the point. Back to McClellan. Looking for the shot. That one goes just wide. Sent back towards the middle off a pass from Kyle McGinnis. Tully so skates it out of his zone, and that'll be offside. The Lancers killing off the penalty to Billy McCarthy. The bench miners still in play with a minute 34 to go on the Foxborough power play. Honestly, not a bad job defensively by Norton. A lot of opportunities so far for Foxborough. Haven't been able to capitalize, and they've kept Brendan Tully a check so far, which is exactly what they wanted to do. So now back to a five on four power play. Flukinger able to break up that pass is Donahue. Skating down ice, retreats back into his own end is Brendan Tully. We've seen him gone down the ice quite a few times here tonight, blowing by almost every defender. Passing it to Matt Tully is Patrick Donahue able to send it all the way back to Rieger. Flukinger applying the pressure on Tully. As he'll send it up to his brother Matt. That first line defensive pairing working with two brothers here tonight for Foxborough, who last season scored 72 goals, but away from home, they only scored 27 of those 72. McCarthy able to knock that one free. Flukinger sends it to Giuliano, who sends it all the way down the ice as Rudy controls it. 11 14 and counting left here in the first period. Just about 40 seconds to go on the bench minor to the Lancers. It's Tully going by almost everybody, has it in the low slot. A lot of paces in front. That one's put home. Ronnie McClellan putting it in, and it's 1 0 Foxborough. At 4.01, Ronnie McClellan getting the soaring started. And 
Foxborough takes a 1-0 lead. And you know that was going to happen at some point. Foxborough did a great job so far in the game of creating a lot of misdirection in front for director, and that time they just got him. So the fifth shot of the night for Foxborough works as that shot goes right into the glove of Mitchell Director. So Foxborough cash in on their first power play opportunity of the night. And they'll take a 1-0 lead here in the first period. And Ronnie McClellan scoring that goal was a Sun Chronicle All-Star in 2017-18. Ten goals last season, getting on the board for the first time tonight. Warren in the face off top for the Lancers, wins it back to Giuliano. Director covers that right up. The Lancers, they've been controlling some face-off wins, but they haven't been able to create basically any offense here today. No, we've only seen the puck go down the Foxborough end of the ice. I mean, only one time so far. This is where I want to see a little bit more and much more opportunistic forecheck. Get the puck down the zone, be aggressive, because Foxborough's come out One of the big everything. things you see there off that face-off is Brendan Hayden on the near side. They usually love to leak him down deep. We saw it a whole lot of times last year. Could only get it to work maybe once or twice, but they'll have Hayden down to the near side as Donahue tries to flip it to him. And it's taken away. Foxborough trying to bring this one up. Sebastian Ricketts, the shot goes just wide of the glove of director. Warrior shot, intercepted by Giuliano, who plays it back up to Flukinger. Lancer offensive attack, they've been able to get really nothing going here in the early going. This Foxborough team applying the pressure. Sends this one on towards net, the backhand opportunity goes wide from Watts. This director able to jump on the puck. 10-12 left in the first period. The goal from McClellan at 4-0-1. Foxborough the one nothing lead. I'll tell you one thing, Foxborough's time possession is going to be through the roof tonight. This is the way it's going to keep going. Their zone time and slot, sh slot shots especially through the roof here in the early going as Donahue tied up on the faceoff. The gear trying to win it, but instead it'll go to Tanner Kennedy, the captain for this Foxborough team. The gear controlling the zone and gets it tied up with the referee. They'll try to set it up. They can't clear their own zone. The shot goes right into the chest of Mitchell Director. The seventh shot of the night already for Foxborough. And it's just nothing spooking so far here in the early going for the Lancers. The passes are just missing. They've really been unable to clear it out of their own zone through the first five minutes and five seconds of this one. Donahue and that Lancer second line out there. Tully has it. He'll look to play it back to his brother, and he does. The 37-point score a season ago, the first player for Foxborough to equip the 20-point mark since Kyle Sprells and Liam Lynch both had 25 in 2013-14. Lance was able to clear their own zone. They aren't able to create any offensive attack as this one gets played all the way back to the rector. Dylan McCarthy sending this one forward across, goes off his stick taken by Tully. And sent back down the ice. The Lancers having to play a whole lot of defensive minutes here. It's John Gagir. Having this one for the Lancers. Plays it off the boards, but taken right away by Kirk Leach. And sent all the way back into the zone. The Lancers' legs have to be tired as they send this one out of play over the boards. With 8.59 to go in the first period. I'll tell you what, Jay, the biggest thing I'm seeing so far is just I'm appalled by the absolute like the absolute speed of Foxborough. That's something that's beaten Norton very early on. And they were able to play with the speed of Hopkinton, a very good team out of the Division II. They are Division III. Was able to play with them, really was leading for, 50, for 44 of the 45 minutes, but now the Lancers have a three-on-one. They were able to convert zero times out of the three times. They had a three-on-one against Weymouth as Rieger. Able to Block that first shot on net of the night for the Lancers. Giuliano having to retreat back into his own end. That one will go all the way down the ice. We'll get a whistle, and icing is the call. So a face-off down on the Foxborough end. And the first good, really good Norton rush we've seen on offense all the night. Yep, they're going to get another opportunity here in Foxborough territory. Got to score here. Cannot go into the second period, still trailing. Got to create some search of, some source of offensive urgency. Let's see who's going to do it for him. Six them. minutes, 25 seconds into the first period. The lone goal of the night scored by Ronnie McClellan at 4-0-1 to give Foxborough a 1-0 lead. The Lancers able to win the faceoff cross. Trying to play towards the slot. Had Tommy Whalen right there. The pass just missing his stick. Giuliano applying a good check. As Tully's shot goes just wide. Whalen with it now, getting around a few defenders, looking to feed it to Donahue, just past his stick, and it'll go into the corner. 
a fantastic opportunity for the Lancers, but once again, unable to convert as Donnie Uassin in front. It's kicked back out all the way to the top. The gear looking to play towards the slot. Foxborough able to clear their own zone. Sebastian Ricketts able to get around a defender. We're going to play towards the slot. It just goes just wide. As Giuliano has it. 7 49 left in the first period. The Lancers with only two shots on net. Foxborough with seven here in the early going. And not a lot of whistles here either. Lots of changes on the fly for the Lancers. Giuliano goes back to the Lancer bench. As Jared Fluginger comes out on the defensive end. Foxborough with a burst of speed. They'll bring this one up and a check by Ward. And they try to get both him and Gagir trying to get a, some sort of check on oh, Telly, but they're able to get one of the Lancers going the other way. On the counterattack, Warden able to get it around. Matt Telly is that shot right in front. Walked away by Espen Rager. Gagir getting it around a defender, but the Lancers having to clear the zone. Walks in on net from the slot. That shot goes just over the netting. Foxworth had another opportunity, but kept in by the stick. By the skate, my apologies, of Cross. Hayden plays it all the way back into the Foxborough zone. And here's the part where we're seeing the Lancers create some offensive opportunities. To. This is what they're going to have to do if they want to win. Keep Foxborough out of your own zone. Tanner Kennedy having this one, bringing it up, trying to get around the fender, but passes it right back to Kirk Leach. Giving it away now. Donnie, who has, has Hayden on the low slide, just needs one point. Just needs, Hayden just needs one goal to break Jake Palin's overall record here at Norton High School of 25 career goals. The Lancers unable to create yet another opportunity in the rush, so they do get a shot on net. McCarthy chasing this one down the ice from McCrellan. Wait into the boards and a big hit there by Gagir. Norton sending it all the way down ice. And an icing will be called. 6-12 left of the first period. Joe Giuliano, the Lancer captain, staying out there for yet another shift. And one of the big questions we asked him earlier in the season when I interviewed him was how will this depth of this team maybe help your play with a little more ice time? He said it helped it greatly, but so far tonight we've seen him walk a whole lot of minutes, Tim. Yeah, it's, it seems like the same off, the same game plan for Joey as last season. You thought they'd give him a little extra rest here and there just to keep him fresh for the third period. Haven't seen that so far. Well, when you have with a player like Joey Giuliano as the Lancers, the counterattack here. Taken in the zone by Giuliano. But what you have with a Lancer player like Giuliano is a player with a lot of talent and a lot of skill on that back end where a lot of players in that position are lacking. And not a whole, whole lot of players want to be an offenseman. A lot of them want to be that flashy scorer, but Giuliano loving that defensive side of things. And as a captain, he's got to be the leader both physically, through his play, and through his words on the ice. And we saw him offensively last year really lighted up 25 points on the season as Brendan Tully is a shot that just gets deflected in front by Jack Watts. Cross, tying up for two men on the boards that sent all the way back down ice. No ice in Colton off a of Foxborough stick as Rager plays it. Rager sending it forward right into the glove. Right onto the stick, my apologies to Mitchell Rector here. 5-12 left in the first period. The Lancers down to 1-0 thanks to a goal from Ronnie McClellan at 4-0-1. Matt Tilly goes to get in the corner, sent it to the far end. As Pat Donahue there to with him. They look to play towards a slot to Whalen. It's played behind the net. Telly has it once again. Now a lot of opportunities in the slot. Tried to send it to Hayden, but intercepted by Matt Telly. Brendan Hayden mixing in on that second line with Donahue and Tommy Whalen. As the Warriors unable to clear their own zone, they've spent a lot of time bogged down deep in their own end, but here comes Brendan Telly. The captain looking for a shot right into the glove of Mitchell Rector. 4.30 left in the first period from here on the Foxborough Sports Center. Jimmy, so far I've really been impressed with Director. I mean, we didn't know how he was going to come out. A lot of pressure on him. And other than the one shot that ended up going in, which was really just picking up the trap for Foxborough in front of the net, he's played it sensational. And he has done a fantastic job. That one goal is really just off a rebound. Nothing he could do about it. He was pulled too far to the near side post. McClellan was just right in the doorstep, put it home easily. As Brendan Hayden comes into the faceoff, Don. It's been a tough night for Warren on those draws. Kicked out twice so far early tonight. Kennedy with a chance that goes just wide over the net. As Kirk Leach has it in the far corner. Sends it back to the top to Jacob Warriors. 
Warriors gets it again, rifles up a shot. It's blocked in front, and Director really playing way out of his own crease. This is blocked off the stick and wide by Director. Just under four minutes to go here in the first period. But it's Joey Giuliano with a burst of speed and opportunity. He has Hayden down to the near side. We're going to get it to him. Hayden has it. The shot just wide of the net. Pat Warden looks to grab it in the offensive end. Now to Flukinger. Sends its way up to Giuliano who loses his foot. He looks to send it on towards net. Hayden. Deflected it just wide. Sending it on in front of Warden. Just battling for that puck right in the slot. Donahue went for the one-timer. Now it's Brent. John Brennan caught the bad end of a two-on-one. Fortunately for him, able to get it up towards center ice as Pat Donahue takes it all the way back in his own end. 3.23 and counting to go here in the first period. The Lancers down one nothing. Juliana rifles a shot from all the way at center ice right into the glove of Espen Rager. We saw the Lancers do that quite a few times last year. Send that puck deep in on net, try and get an opportunity, and what they will get out of it is a face-off in their offensive zone. I mean, we talked about that pregame. Northern's going to have to find a way to get offensively creative. I guess that will qualify. Being an offensive and critically scrappy team, that's exactly what you want for the Lancers. They found a way to get a few goals from them last year, most notably Clint Gallagher doing it against Dover Sherborne the first time they beat them in the program history. The game they won 3-1 as Gagir intercepts the pass. As Donahue will bring it all the way back to his own end. Billy McCarthy now grabbing it. Has Whalen weaking out deep just by his six and all the way down the ice. And icing will be the call with 2.50 to go here in the first period. The Lanes will get a face off all the way down in their defensive end. And what started off as seven straight shots for Foxborough without a Lancer opportunity. We've gone back to sort of an even, even late. Nine shots on the net for Foxborough, five for Norton here with 2.50 to go. Yeah, the offense has found a way to at least get the puck out of the zone, take the pressure off Mitch, and just start creating opportunities. Keep that going. Foxborough winning the face off. The shot going just wide of the net. And a fantastic hit on the near side by the Norton Lancers, but an arm in the air, and the Lancers will go on the penalty kill once again. We'll get another whistle, cross-checking on Gagir, and an interference penalty called on Matt Tully. And already six penalty minutes on the night for the Norton Lancers. As Brendan Hayden, two minutes in the box for cross check. And my apologies will be Matt Tully, the freshman, go into the box for interference. And you could hear that hit, Tim, rattle around this arena. Oh, I think you heard that back in Norton tonight. I mean, if you can at least create off off sense of offensive opportunities, which at least they're starting to do, Norton's got to play physical and at least get into the heads of these Warriors. And this now opening the ice up just a bit. Well, it looked for a bit like we'd be going four on four, but the Lancers and Warriors both putting another man on the ice. Cross coming out for the Lancers. And we'll get some five on five hockey. Foxborough winning the face off. It's a deflected pass in front off of Kennedy going wide. Flukinger right around, right around center ice. He's looking for a pass and an opportunity. But Ronnie McClellan playing it back into his own end. Flukinger. Playing this one to cross, the Lancers looking for an opportunity, gets by one man, looking to get it on net from the slot right into the chest of Espen Rieger, but what an opportunity and what a dangle from cross there at center ice. Absolutely. Be able to play with the speed of Foxborough, you have to put the pressure back on them. Get what you get. If you can just at least get any shots, we know how Rieger plays. He likes to be aggressive outside of the crease. Get him to slip, get him to make a mistake, and that's how you're going to get back in this game. And Cross, the last six games of last year, had four points, really showing his ability there as the shot from Cross right off the faceoff going just wide of the net. It's Kyle McGinnis. Passes it forward off the stick of a Warrior and all the way down ice to director with 1.50 to go here in the first period. The lone goal of the night scored by Ronnie McClellan back at 4.01. The Lance have been looking to tie this thing up ever since then. They've had quite a few good opportunities and most notably had a three-on-one as that shot goes just wide. Most notably a three-on-one. They were unable to get a single shot off and another big check down low for the Lancers. Donahue has it in the corner. We're going to play it up and clear the zone. But it's Foxborough who sends it all the way down ice. Once again, Juliano to grab it. 120 and counting to go here in the period. They have time to it all the way down deep. But now they're caught in a situation well, they only have a few men on defense. The shot right into the chest of Mitchell Director. Those are the saves he's going to have to make tonight. When there's a little bit of a slip, when there's a little bit of a slide, when these, when the speed of Foxborough 
continues to get to that defense of Norton. Mitch has been there tonight. And a point blank shot right out in front of the net, right outside of the goal crease. Unfortunately for Foxborough, just sends it right into the chest. His Bertuma shot right into the glove. His director going back and forth, three saves on the rush. And we'll get a whistle now with exactly a minute to go in the period. I think the ref was yelling at Brendan for closing the door too early, maybe trying to get an extra hit in. So we'll do a face-off back at center ice. The face-offs tonight just about even. Seven face-off wins for the Lancers, eight for the Foxborough Warriors as the Lancers win the face-off. Fukinger plays it back to Billy McCarthy with less than a minute remaining here in the period. Fukinger streaking in to grab this one. And it's taken away by Foxborough, and they'd love to get an insurance goal here with less than a minute to go in the first period going into intermission. The Lancers have it. Gill sliding into the corner. Going to play it out towards the slot instead. It'll be Foxborough. Grabbing this one, clearing their own zone with less than 30 seconds to go in the period. It's knocked down at center ice by Declan Gill. As McCarthy sends it down ice off this foot of Tommy Whalen. With 15 seconds to go in the period. They're trying to leak a man out deep. They'll get it to him. Almost a one-on-one, -on -one, but right through the legs of Sebastian Ricketts. 10 seconds to go in the period now. 1-0, still the score, Foxborough waiting. And that's where we'll end the first period as Gagir controls at the end of the end. Intermission report coming up next and after an exciting first period for the Foxborough Sports Center. It's the Warriors leading the Lancers 1-0. Stick with us, folks. This is LSN. Hello, folks. Welcome inside the LSN Intermission Report. I'm Javid Blake alongside Tim Crowley and Tim through that first period, Foxborough currently leading 1 0. Foxborough really controlled the offensive advantage throughout. Yes, they did. Almost the entire first five minutes of the game was spent in Norton territory. Mitch Director had to work very hard the first period, but he rose to the challenge. Other than the first kind of garbage goal, he was all he was in control tonight. And the one goal tonight scored by Ronnie McClellan at 401 to make it 1 0. Foxborough and Rieger on the other side of things hasn't really been tested at all. No, he hasn't. And I think. That's still a kind of a key point for Norton to work on going into the second period. Find a way to create more opportunistic offense. Even when they've been getting their opportunities, Foxborough has done a great job on one-on-one -on -one matchups of forcing Norton offensive players to the weak side, trying to get little backhanded flip shots, or not even a shot at all. They've been able to knock it away, send it back down the other end. Norton starts to, needs to start winning the one-on-one -on -one matchups and find a way to continue to get creative offensively. The one thing we've seen this year as compared to last year, just in the first period, is the Lancers' ability to get it out of their offensive zone. We'd see times last year where they'd be bogged down in their defensive zone and there was nothing they could do to get out of it. But this year what we're seeing is a lot of offensive zone breakouts and we saw a huge 3 on 0 the Lancers just couldn't convert off of. No, and, that, and that's when it gets to crunch time is that's the matchups you got, they need to win. If you can't get the puck out of your zone, you're not going to win. If you can't get the puck in the net in the offensive zone, you're not going to win. Find a way to just keep taking the pressure off your goalie. Mitch is a young kid. He's got to still have time to learn. You can't put that much pressure on him, really. Find a way to get some more shots. This is These are the games where you look to your shots. These are the games where you look to scores like Brennan, scores like Joey Giuliano. Who's going to be the first guy to hit, hit in the back of the net? That's going to determine this game. And Mitch, you are saying he's young, and he is very young. Even though he's a senior, this is only his fourth ever start in a Norton Lancer jersey. You know, he's kind of like in baseball, like the uh, the 36-year-old AAA guys finally getting their first call-up. But I think Mitch definitely, like we talked about with Rieger in the, in the first part of our pregame show, don't let the lights of Varsity spark you, uh, scare you away. He has a period under his belt. He's ready to go. He's made the saves when he's had to. And really, other than the misdirection in front of the net, he's played his butt off so far. If he can continue to do that, Norton still will have a chance to take this one. And this is just shaping up to be the rivalry game that we've always imagined. A close game, and the Lancers are still very much in it, even though the shots would indicate that Foxborough controls all the momentum. And they do, but the shots are only 13-6. to six. It's only been one period. There's still 30 minutes to go, and the Lancers could have a whole lot of opportunities going down the stretch. Absolutely. I think round one definitely went to Foxborough, but Norton showed some fight in the second half of that first period. More shots on goal, more physicality in second piece. That's going to be a key. If they can keep getting in there, get tough on Foxborough, keep hitting them, get in their heads, 
that's going to help them psychologically throughout the rest of the game. So the second period coming up next. I'm Javik Blake alongside Tim Crowley. This has been the Allison Intermission Report. Foxborough currently leading the Lancers 1-0. Stick with us, folks. This is LSN. Hello, folks. Welcome back into the Foxborough Sports Center. I'm Javik Blake as we get ready for the second period of action here at the FSC. But first off, let's go around the TBL earlier today in action. A whole lot of teams in action today in the TBL earlier today, though. Medfield defeating Burryville by a 3-1 final. Hopkinton giving it to East Log Meadow with a 10-0 final in that one. A whole bunch of people with four different goals. A scoring clinic by Hopkinton. The only TBL TBL action game today was the Westwood Wolverines tying the Ashland Clackers 2-2. Another action today, Medway defeating Medway, losing to Oliver Ames by a 6-1 final, and currently going underway is Bellingham at Miniman at 7.30, and Dedham plays East Boston tomorrow at 4.30. But Tim, as we get to the second period, what do the Lancers have to do to get chances on Espen Rager? Well, I think you just got to start off with first keeping the pressure off of Mitch and just find a way to chip, chip, and chip away at Foxborough. Flick the puck out of the zone if you have to. Just find a way. You can't start the second period the way you started the first. You can't have five straight minutes in your in your own zone with director just shielding shots left and right. Find a way. Win a couple more face-offs. Get on your strong side. That's the base thing. Win some more one-on-one -on -one matchups. We just we talked about it in our intermission show. Get more one-on-one -on -one matchups. Don't let them force you to your weak side where you're just gonna have to flip it away with your back end. Get in your strong side. Force some miss some missed opportunities for Foxborough and just find a way to get the puck in the back of the net. And the Lancers switching things up here to start the second period. Instead of the normal first line of Hayden Lord and Flukinger, it'll instead be Waylon, Donahue, and Cross. The Lancers matching up their second line out to start this second period. Is run away back from the FSC. Foxborough winning the opening face off to start the second period. Just like they did the first, they'll take it down. Ice Leach getting it. As McCarthy controls at the corner for Norton and tries to chip it out. But it goes off the netting. And Tim, one of the big things we saw towards the end of that first period was the physicality of the Lancers really was able to tick up. Right, and that's going to be something that's going to keep them in the game. Foxborough, it slowed them down. All we've seen so far is the absolute speed that this team has between their defense. Obviously, you have a big guy in Tully. But if you can start hitting them, it gets in their heads. It slows them down. It beats them up for the rest of the game. It takes some of that speed away, which can only help you on defense and offense. And it's Tommy Whalen sending it out of the zone for the Norton Lancers here. 22 seconds into the second period as Ronnie McClellan drop passes it back in the slot. As Kirk Leach's shot went right off the back of Ronnie McClellan. Kennedy chasing after with Whalen. Kennedy looked to go for the big hit, but Whalen able to sidestep as Gagir gets tied up there with Ronnie McClellan. Foxborough has it, tries to send it around to the front side, but Tanner Kennedy's little pass is jumped on by Mitch Director. 14-17 here left in the second period. The Lancers still down 1-0. And just as you said before this, you can't start the second period like you started the first period. We're seeing the same exact thing. Yeah, they got to find a way to get it out. Win a face off. Honestly, I'll take a couple icings if it's just going to make a difference. Foxborough winning the draw. That's the physicality we need. Foxborough controls on the near side. Boards just outside the dot. They'll get it back to the point. Towards the slot now, but it's taken away by Tommy Whale. Now the Lancers have the numbers on a 2-1-2 two -two rush. It's Cross getting it around, pushing off his man, plays it into the corner. A big hit from Matt Tully as Foxborough goes the other way. Now it's Brendan Tully and the Lancers caught on a line change. Billy McCarthy gets cross-footed as that one taken behind the net now. And jumped on by Director. Thirteen forty-one left here in the second period. The Lancers down one at nothing, and there hasn't even been a lot of shots from Foxborough. It's all they need is that constant offensive pressure. Yeah, and that's what speed does for you. They've been able to keep it in, but Mitch has been doing just that all night long. And Mitchell, the rector, just gets it right into his catching glove there as Foxborough gets their fourteenth shot already of the night. Skating into the net for the Lancers is Patrick Donahue. As Foxborough able to win the face off and take it behind the, the Lancer net. He'll play it on the low slide just outside the low dot circle. 
and a great battle going on there. It seems to be Jack Watts just walking up and down those near side boards in the offensive zone. The Lancers try to clear their own zone here. Flukinger has it, they're able to get it. Flukinger tries to bring it up, but it's Brendan Hayden skating into take it away. We're gonna get an opportunity to get it towards the slot, but it's taken away in a great play from Bertuman on that back end. And a couple of hops there on the far side boards right in front of the Lancer bench is Giuliano chasing after it. Able to push his man off of it. Stick gets tied up with the Ricketts, but he'll take it out for the Lancers. Has Hayden on the far side. Instead, this guy should just skate it by himself. And play to Pat Warden, up to Hayden. Sends it down ice, and the Lancers go for a line change. Hopping out of the ice of that second line, a Waylon Donahue cross. As they feed it all the way down ice, the icing waved off. As into the net goes Sebastian Ricketts. Unfortunately, that doesn't count as a goal from Foxborough. And John Gagir looks like he might be going to the box. The net jumped off its moorings. No, it looks like we'll stay five on five, but what a fantastic hit from John Gagir. That's what it takes. The Lancers trying to get a last second line change. Juliano trying to come off for McCarthy coming on. And it said they'll call Juliano all the way back out from the Lancer bench. 12.26 left here in the second period. The lone goal scored in this one by Ronnie McClellan. A power to play goal at 4.01 in the first period. Whalen tied up on the draw with Foxborough. Who will win it? They'll take behind the Lancer net. Ronnie McClellan, the lone goal tonight. Passing it to Kennedy. Tied up with Donahue, but it's taken. Came and coming in with it is Kirk Leach. As we'll get an arm raise and a penalty. And a slashing call against Foxborough. So the Lancers, for the first time tonight, will go on the power play. And they couldn't have thought of a better time to do this. They've been bogged down deep in their own end for about the first three or four minutes of this first period. It's a chance for some sustained offensive attack in their own end. Oh, without question, the best offensive opportunity of the night. If you have, it's almost like kind of like we're in a basketball situation here. If you have to sell a call a little bit, that's perfectly fine if it's going to get you an offensive opportunity. So Tanner Kennedy, two minutes in the box for slashing at 2.49 of the, first, of the second period. Foxborough able to win the face up and send it all the way down ice. Or look to go down ice, but jumps over the boards into the Foxborough fan section. So we're going to face off all the way back in the Lancer zone. The Lancers, they just need to win face offs here. That's their biggest problem. They've yet to win a face off here in the second period. They just need to win one to create some offensive opportunity. You have Giuliano, who's a great scorer. You have Yagir out there, who provides great presence on the four check. You also have Hayden out there as well. Yagir. Has his win from the point, fires it wide, and it gets sent back all the way to Giuliano. Giuliano plays to Flukinger, jumps over his stick as Warden chases behind it behind his own net. Giuliano pitching it forward, but now an opportunity. Here comes Tully, and a bad opportunity for the North Lancers. A 2 on one, the pass shot scores, 2 0. Kirk Leach finishing off a fantastic play, and a shorthanded goal from Foxborough gives them a 2 0 lead. That's what speed does for you. Foxborough has been winning that game all night long. They've come out with a sense of urgency, and they've been able to fly up and down the rink all night, especially on the, on the penalty kill. That's going to win you some games. They've got all the momentum right now. It's going to be interesting to see how Norton can respond, and, and they better do it now. A fantastic goal by Kirk Leach, a shorthanded goal, and it's really been this five-on-five five, the Lancers have done fantastic. But when they're when the special teams need to come out, that's when they fail. The power play goal and a shorthanded goal tonight for Foxborough gives them a 2-0 lead. And what a finish from Kirk Lynch. Absolutely. Two on one. Tully using his visions to see it. You getting his first assist of the season. Kirk Leach building off his five-goal season last year, scoring a goal tonight to make it 2-0. And now if you're the Lancers, you're deep in a hole. Yep. Especially when you haven't been if it's one thing if you've been getting shots on like that's not something Norton's done. They need to get extra, extra aggressive on offense. And the Lancers drawn off sides. And only one shot on net this whole period for the Lancers. And compared to the other side of things, 
three for Foxborough, but it's really been three quality chances. The Lance have been unable to get any quality chances in on Rager, and as a result, he's had a very easy night. I think Norton's past the point of just getting shots on goal. I think the new focus has to be possession in the offensive zone. It's not something they've been able to do, and it's put so much pressure on their defense. And now we have a whistle for the ref on the far side coming in. And they just have Joey Giuliano sitting at the very top of your screen all alone. But a little dust up between Cross and Matt Tully on the near side. And Warren gets kicked out of the faceoff once again. That's the third time tonight he's been kicked out. And now Joey Giuliano has to come back in. The Lancers able to win the faceoff and send it down to the Foxborough into the ice as Rager. My apologies, director grabs it. McCarthy picks it up behind his own net. He'll sit there. And the Lancers and coach Jay Thobato, they've just been unable to have any answer for this Foxborough offensive attack. They haven't been able to really mount anything offensively as Juliana plays it into the corner. And a great check there by Brendan Tully to get it away. Juliano has it defended by Jack Watts, but instead tries to skin it on towards net, but it's taken away. And now here comes Tully and a three on one opportunity. Juliano has been out there for a long time, but Flukinger is able to clear his own zone. Following as he shot it, but able to clear it out. Tully grabbing it, tied up with McCarthy as he'll send it out towards center ice. Over to Flukinger, has one man to beat. He'll get back the shot, what a save by Espen Rager. The best opportunity of the night by the newcomer, Jared Flukinger, blocked by Espen Rager with some fantastic reflexes there. And what a save to preserve a two goal lead. Foxborough has it on the other way though, the shot Oh, what a pass right in front to Kirk Leach. And a high stick called on Foxborough, however, so that'll put the face off all the way back in the Foxborough end. But what a save from Espen Rager, but what an opportunity. That's, a, I mean, it's pretty obvious that Foxborough can need quite a few, or that, sorry, Norton's gonna need quite a few more of those. But if you can at least just start getting those opportunities, that's what I'm talking about with the one-on-one -on -one battles. That first period, that puck's on his backside, he's not getting that quality shot. As Donahue wins the face off to Tommy Whalen, who sends us on towards Gill, the backhand shot just wide of the net. And here comes the uh, sustained offensive attack for the Lancers. Back and forth, but that's all right, but now here goes the other way. McCarthy having to race back. As Kirk Leach's shot deflected out of play, but one of the big things for the Lancers, is we just saw Brendan Hayden, the team's captain, heading off to the locker room. He's been dealing with back spasms all week. Thought he would be ready to go tonight. Only lasted one shift in their preseason against, you know, Adam Roy before his back spasms started to creep up. He didn't play against Weymouth, but now out tonight for just a period and a half. Yeah, we saw him early in the first period. He took a face off went straight to the ground, was very slow to get up, and was immediately grabbing his left hip for the next couple of times Talking up and down. To him, he seemed like it would be okay for tonight, but it looks like those back spasms have creeped up as Patrick Donahue. Sending that one in, the Lancers having to regroup as they're just barely off sides. It's nice Jogging here with a fantastic open ice hit. Sent to Whalen. Able to cross it back towards the Lancer bench. And it's really been a skill point it could have put on by the Lancers when they have the opportunities. 9.05 and counting to go here in the second period. John Brennan skating back for the Lancers. They'll pass it up to Kirk Leach. Has the shorthanded goal tonight to put Foxborough up 2-0. Director able to save it. A big rebound sent all the way out towards the point. And right on the stick, a number 10 John Moses going just wide. So with the Lancers now with nine shots on net, Foxborough with 17 and a whole lot of offensive attack. John Moses able to grab it, but it's just outside of the offensive zone, and Tommy Whalen sends it all the way down ice. Icing called off. The Lance will go to the bench for a much needed line change. Flukiger coming on the ice. We saw his abilities with a big shot, and therefore, right after, with a huge hit. The gear controlling it just outside center ice. Says Lorden, who sends it all the way down ice. And the Lancers try to create some offensive opportunities. Warden tying it up in the corner. And yet another big hit and another good reaction. And Foxborough's going to need to get a line change. Good gear. As Sean Creven trailing him. Is that third line out for Foxborough on the forward side? Jeremy Cross will grab it. 
prepare for the big hits that are trying to play the puck outside of the zone as Fukinger able to send it towards the slot jump here with another big hit, establishing the presence on the forecheck. That was something that he was highly touted of doing coming into this season. We've seen that a lot tonight. The shot from just outside the slot, right into the glove of Mitch Director with 7.29 to go here in the second. I'll tell you what, both offensively and defensive so far, more, more, more offensively, Foxborough has definitely outplayed Norton tonight. At the very least, at the very least, Norton has won the physicality battle. And it's starting to get real physical here in the later stages of the second period. If the Lancers can keep up that physicality, they could be creating some very good chances in the third period. And it's still only a two-goal game. Foxborough controlling it behind the net, looking for a centering pass towards the slot. Donahue sends it to McCarthy as the Lancers will try to break it out of their own zone. He'll just skate it up here, trying to get it around. A defender gets it. But it's taken right back. Matt Tully walking the blue line. But Tuman has it. Sent forward towards the Foxborough blue line. Sent all the way down ice in the Norton end. 6.55 and counting here in the second period. Joey Giuliano has it. Here's a chance. Anchor with the back line has Donahue down low. Looks to feed it to him. The shot. Espen Rager. Another fantastic save. And without him, this game could very much be 2 2. Giuliano able to stick hand that way. Poach check to get it away, and it's Mitch Director coming way out of his own net to grab it. His helmet comes off, we'll get a whistle. But Mitch Director with the poke check to play the puck coming way out of his own net. He's ready to win this game himself. He's ready to win this game himself, he doesn't care. That is what you want to see from the Lancers. A fantastic offensive opportunity and a fantastic defensive chance. And if the Lancers can get this up throughout the second period, they're going to be looking good for the third. Hey, this is a rivalry game for a reason. These teams don't like each other. Play with some passion. You play with passion, you get more opportunities. You play more aggressive. If they can do that, they're going to be in great shape. But they got to play with some intensity. And this Foxborough-Norton rivalry, the biggest rivalry Norton has. Foxborough leads 5-3 to, th to three with three ties in the modern era. But eight of those 11 games have been decided by one goal or less. And for the Lancers, over the past few years, they've really been controlling games. Yes, it's only been 3-2 in favor of Norton, but they've really been controlling those games, not for some fluke goals last year, and a pretty much meltdown two years ago when they were up 3-0 and blew that lead and ended up losing on account of a ton of third-period goals. This is a new Foxborough team. Very much new Foxborough team, and they're taking it to the Lancers in a way we haven't seen them travel. Well, it keeps the rivalry interesting. I mean, you never want to see it one-sided just for the pure enjoyment of sports. But as a broadcast team, I mean, it keeps the game interesting for us, too. And Mitch Director still having some troubles with his helmet. But Foxborough coming off a season where they won 10 games, this very much is looking like a team that could win even more than that this year. They were able to tie Hopkinton in their last preseason game. And tonight, they're controlling the action, controlling the play. In the opening of both periods, they've really been able to set the tone. Yeah, and a win for Foxborough tonight can do wonders for them throughout the rest of the season. They play in a very competitive hockey mock that's pretty much wide open every year, but they still have to play some teams like Franklin, who is one of the better teams in the league, and also has one of the best fan sections in the league that can get in your, inside your head. They play teams like Mansu, they play teams scrappy like King Phillip. A win can do them wonders tonight. As Foxborough controlling the draw on the near side after Mitchell Director and his helmet getting fixed. The gear has it geometrically off the boards to cross. We're going to play to Flukinger. Can't get it to him, but it's taken away by Kirk Leach. Sending it all the way back on the other side. Now with three on two, looking for a pass. It sends a shot right over the glove of Mitch Director, and it's 3 0, and it is all Foxborough here with 6.09 to go here in the second. It's perfect execution by Foxborough right there. Nice little side coming on his strong side. And, I, and as for Mitch Director, there's not much you can do there. Top shelf. Six side, it's a tough save to make for anybody. And if you're a Lancer fan, you got to be disappointed in how this is going tonight. Coming into tonight, they were touted as a highly, a highly offensive team that could be able to withstand the offensive attack of Foxborough. And so far through two periods, this just looks like a continuation of last year of anything else. So 3-0 to score, 6-0-1 and counting left here in the second period. Giuliano checked right in front of the Lancer bench. And we'll get a penalty and a tripping call on Giuliano, and that sends the Lancers back to the sends the Lancers back to the penalty kill for the third time tonight. 
between the power play and the pen penalty kill, it's obviously so far decided this game. Talked a lot in uh, the season preview show with Coach Lobato. He wanted to win games five on five. He wasn't too much concerned about his power play. He was confident in his penalty kill. He wanted to win games five on five. They've done a pretty good job of that so far. But this is where these games are won. And the penalty kill for the Lancers was such a hallmark of the team last season. So far tonight, one goal on two opportunities for Foxborough and a plethora of chances. Whale unable to bury that one away and the shot right into the glove of Mitch Director. And on you talking about that goal, there's really nothing Mitchell Director could do about it. No, that's it. Like I said, tough save for anybody. It's tough to get that blocker, even with the stick up on that side. Top shelf. If he's going to find that precision for Foxborough, hat off to him. With 5.30 and counting left here in the second period, a minute 40 left on the penalty to Joey Giuliano for tripping. Foxborough controls it, sends it out. To the far side, Dot Parker getting in on the action there. Donahue in there as well, but now a man right to the other side of the slot. A perfect opportunity for Sebastian Rickens to make it 4-0. We've seen that more than a few times from Foxborough tonight. They've done a great job creating passes for two-on-one -on -one opportunities. And they have Ricketts once again, but the Lancers able to break up that pass before it gets to Ricketts on the near side. Three-nothing the score as the Lancers descend it all the way down the ice. Rager to grab it. Plays it off the boards. And Foxborough with yet another opportunity. Ronnie McClellan sending it to the near side boards. They're looking to play back to the top. He does. Sends it to Sebastian Ricketts, who shot is blocked in front by Director, who picks this one up. And that has to be five or that has to be five shots now on the power play for the Foxborough Warriors, and they're really just controlling everything. Yeah. I mean, at this point, the confidence on the northern side is going to start to be dwindling. How are they going to respond? Like you said, this is your rivalry game. They have to find some passion and find some aggressiveness to come back and at least get a fight offensively. And just in the game in general. As this pass sent down to the low slot, the shot blocked by Mitch Director. And it really hasn't been anything other than the Lancers have just come out flat in the beginning of both periods. No, That's really set the tone in Foxborough's favor, and they've just taken that momentum for the entire period. As Lan the Lancers are able to send this one all the way down ice to Rager. McGinnis to grab it. 20 seconds left in their power play. One of two tonight. It's Brendan Tully. Sending that one back into the own end, and a great hit from John Brennan as the shot deflected and out of play. And one of the big things here, Timmy, is we have five seconds left on the penalty kill for the Norton Lancers. One of the big things here is the Lancers' forecheck has been fantastic. It's just they haven't done anything in the back end. No, they just, like I said, they've done a much better job. They've made adjustments since the first period where they were just stuck and couldn't get out of their own zone. They found ways to flip it up. They found ways to get a couple two-on-ones, a couple breakaway opportunities. It's just about executing that point. They've just come up a little bit short all, so far. Foxborough winning the faceoff, sends it just wide of the net. Bertuman getting tied up there. And it, there's been spurts of greatness for the Lancers. We saw multiple great opportunities. It's just Espen Rager's been making some fantastic saves in net tonight. Giuliano getting out of the box. The Lancers surviving it. Another penalty kill here tonight. Eight minutes of penalties tonight here for the Lancers. That one shot goes just wide of the net. Ross chasing after this one, trailing Kyle McGinnis, but McGinnis sends it into the Lancer bench and we'll go to face off right outside Rager's position in the far side duck. And your coach Jay Thabato, just what your offensive plan that was implemented worked in spurts, but Foxborough is such a good team. I don't think anyone really expected this out of them. No, and Foxborough has always been a very well-coached team. I mean, this is a tough game. This is Thabato, the disciple, going up against his former head coach. That's very true, and a big factor in this one is Mark Cedarchuk, the head coach for Foxborough, wanting to beat his former assistant, sort of like in college football with Nick Saban, wanting to beat his former assistants, which he always seems to do. As John Gagir has this one at center ice, looking to bring it up. Gets around one defender, instead has to go into the corner to fight for this one. Tied up there, Tommy Whalen tied up in the corner now with Matt Telly. And the Lancers, you would love to get one goal before the end of the second period. And the Lancers will go on the power play, cross-checking the call. 
the Lancers get their second power play opportunity of the night. Failed to convert the first one. We saw some good chances. It's just another huge opportunity. And obviously, you want to get shots on goal, especially when you're on the power play. But don't let Foxborough continuously be able to clear the puck out of the zone. It's taking seconds off your time. It's creating a decrease in shots. Just keep the puck in their zone. Spread, spread it around. You're not in a rush. But you got to have some urgency to score, of course. The, but biggest, the biggest thing, sorry to interrupt you, Tim, but the biggest thing about this power play, Brendan Telly's in the box. And he's their, he's Foxborough's by far and away their best player. So the Lancers can create some opportunities as Pat Warden thrown out of the phase zone off for the fourth time tonight. And the Lancers can create some opportunities as cross right off the blocker of Espen Rager as they'll cover this one up. If you're in Norton, that's fine there. You created a couple shots, got some misdirection, gave Foxborough a taste of their own medicine, get some shots on goal with some misdirection, be able to maybe tip a shot left or right on Rieger. But keep with, that shot right into the glove of Espen Rieger. But just be able, like I said, you still have a minute 51 left, you've gotten a couple shots in, milk this power play out a little bit, run some time down, spread the puck around. Puck movement's going to be huge right here. Warden losing the draw there, but a great check on the far side. Warden cross pushing in front. Rager jumps on it and a mad scrum in front of the net. There's the rivalry we know and love. Cross trying to poke it home right in front of the net. Rager jumping on it and a mad scrum in front. But those are the opportunities you want. We're 15 seconds into this power play and already five shots on net for the Lancers. That is exactly what you want. One of these will find the back of the net. One of them won't. Rager playing out of his mind here tonight. 15 saves on 15 shots, including three gigantic saves to keep this game at 3-0. Bukinger and Warden playing it in the back end, but this one given away to Kirk Leach, who sends it all the way down ice. Director will play it. And what we saw with the Lancers, especially against North Attleboro, a very good Division II team. What we saw out of the Lancers is Yes, they didn't play so well in the first few periods, but the third period, they really turned it on. And if this team is going to end up being one of those third period teams, if they can get a goal right before this end of the second period and keep it at a two-goal game, all they're going to need is two goals to etch out a point here in the third period. Right. It takes just at least a little bit of pressure off. Coming back to try to score three, peri three goals in 15 minutes, that's a challenge for anybody. But now a giveaway is Ronnie McClellan. As one tonight, we're going to finish his second. Misses wide and wide. And the Foxborough assistants on the bench in utter disbelief as McClellan looked to make this game 4-0 and yet another special teams goal but just going wide and then as John Gagir will go to the box. And that's been one of the problems that I've seen from North tonight. Even when they're on their power play, they get so focused on trying to get the right shot that they, they lapse a little bit defensively and that's created some opportunities. Foxborough has already scored a goal shorthanded and they almost had another opportunity there. you got to stay mentally in on both sides of the puck. And now the Lancer power play is over. Two minutes in the box for John Gagir for cross-checking. Here with 1.40 to go in the second period. Foxborough will end up starting the third period on the power play, but until then it's four on four. 42 seconds and counting a four on four play as that one goes by Rager. Icing called off as Cross tries to put it in the back of the net. He'll have it in back. Looks to find Donahue out in front. Instead, right off the pad of Espen Rager. Rager looked to play that for an icing, but just going wide of the net. And the Lancer fans situated right behind Espen Rager's position in net, screaming and shouting, trying to will the way to the Lancers, to will the Lancers to a goal here. It's McCarthy. Wins the faceoff of the Lancers, plays it back to McCarthy, who flicks this one in on net. It's Jacob Warriors trying to clear his zone. And another big hit for the Lancers. The physical presence continuing here. Cross brings it into Foxborough zone. The shot blocked. And off the skates of Patrick Donahue. Less than a minute to go here in the second period. The penalty to Matt Telly, to Brendan Telly, my apologies, running out. And now a minute left of power play for the Foxborough Warriors as icing is now called. 44.1 left here in the second period. Remember folks, 
coming up with the second intermission, we'll have the second intermission report. And Tim, we're gonna have a whole lot to break down here in the second period, including it just seems both periods, like the Lancers get bogged down in their own end for the first half, and then the second half, they're able to create opportunities but Espen Raker's playing fantastic in that right. tonight. Right, they, they've made some adjustments. They've gotten some shots on net, but both goalies have come to play tonight, no question. Ticking under 40 seconds to go here in the second period, and it's really been Rager who's just having the fantastic night. We saw him at a point-blank chance, throttling some opportunities, and he's done it throughout the second period, looking to hand it over to Ricketts. Back to the centering pass to Kirk Leach, who already has a goal tonight. Tully has it now. Over to his brother, Tully. The shot in on front. Looked like it was homeward bound off the stick of a warrior, but just missing wide of the net. Another shot and another save by Mitchell Director. Already 23 shots in the night for Foxborough. Director with another shot off his blocker and in. It's Brendan Tully with his second goal of the night, and the floodgates have now opened here in the second period. 4 0 Foxborough, and the homecoming debut for Jay Thabato, now stands at 4-0 Foxborough. She's and it's just defensive breakdowns. So, I mean, that's just a perfect example. Big time players make big time plays in big time games. Brendan Tully's the star of this Foxborough team and he showed why. Absolute laser from the blue line. Showing why he had 18 goals just a season ago and a goal at 14-52. We'll end the second period and what a second period for the Foxborough Warriors. Three goals to put them up 4 nothing in this one. ALS and Intermission Report coming up next, but it's all Foxborough in this one. They lead this one 4 nothing here on Hockey Night North. Stay with us, folks. This is LSN. Hello, folks. Welcome inside the LSN Intermission Report. I'm Jay McBlake alongside Tim Crowley. Tim, Foxborough leading this 4 0. And if you thought Foxborough was dominating in the first period, well, you were in for a special treat in the second period. Yes, sir, Jay. I mean, if we thought they couldn't kick it up a notch, they found a way to kick it up a notch. A couple more goals. Um, I mean, Brendan Tully finally being able to break through was huge for that Foxborough team. Just an absolute rocket on. I mean, we had two shots that are up here. Mitch can't. He, there's no way he's going to get to that. It's just great execution by Foxborough so far. They're playing with passion. They're playing with aggressiveness. They're playing with speed. They're doing everything right so far. And the Foxborough, with only 11 shots that period, but 11 quality shots. And we saw some beautiful finishes from Foxborough. Right. And we talked about execution all night with them. They've had precision on their shots. They're going to spots where it's been tough for director to get the pads there. They've been playing a great forecheck. Their defense has stepped up when they needed to. And... I think it's safe to say they've had ample, ample offensive opportunities. They've had a ton of offensive opportunities, 24 shots in the night through two periods. And Tim, if you're the Lancers, they really haven't been able to do anything on the defensive end. They've established the four check, yes. They've got good opportunities, yes. And it's really been Espen Rager who's been shutting down everything, and it's turning into basically a blowout at this point. Absolutely. And this is, this is something almost typical of what we've seen out of Northern the last couple of years, where they get in these games, they get into defensive battles, and the other team just finally starts to find ways to make execution against them. Norton still has always been a team that really can't find a way to get the puck consistently out of the zone. It's come back to bite them tonight. And with 24 shots, the Lancers with 16, Espen Rager with 16 saves, trying to go for a second shot of his career, had one last season as well. The faceoffs, though, just about even, but when Foxborough's controlling the puck, they're doing it mostly in their own offensive end for the Lancers when they're getting the puck, as most in their defensive end. And getting it out of the defensive end, as you said, has been an issue all night long. Right. And faceoffs have never really been their strength anyways. It doesn't exactly help when you lose Brendan Hayden either, so we obviously we hope he's fine. Um, but it, it creates a mismatch in the circle for Fox, as far as Norton goes, and Foxborough's taking advantage of it all night long. And for Foxborough, it's also been that special teams, one of three so far on the power play, but one shorthanded goal as well. And if you're the Lancers, that shorthanded goal really just helped open the floodgates. Right, and that's the second one we've seen that's the second one we've seen so far tonight. And like I said, Coach Slabato talks about winning games five on five. They've done a half decent. They've done a pretty decent job doing that. It's just when the man advantage has been on, they haven't been able to make the plays they've needed to. But focusing on the good things for the Lancers, they get into the third period. This game pretty much out of reach, where the four check has been fantastic. They've created good offensive opportunities, and if they can spend this third period creating even better and better offensive opportunities, it could lead to at least some goals tonight. Right. And regardless of win or lose tonight, how they play the next 15 minutes can be very, very definitive of how they play their, throughout their season. If they can get some offensive opportunities, it can establish maybe a new game plan, maybe drop a couple new 
plays to get people to puck in different scenarios. Like I said, I love talking about how our, this offense is going to get creative. Now it's time to show it. You're down by a bit. The pressure's off a little bit because you're not in that tight one goal game where everything has to go right. You can afford to kind of drop a new play, get on the whiteboard and get creative to get a couple goals this period. And the last time we saw a scoreline like this was two seasons ago on opening night with the Lancers beating Foxborough 4-0. Foxborough reversing the reversing the script tonight and beating the Lancers 4-0 through two periods. The third period, however, coming up next, all of the call alongside Tim Crowley right here on LSN. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Foxborough Sports Center. I'm David Blake alongside Tim Crowley. And, Tim, if you're Coach Jay Thabato, what changes did you make during that second period intermission? You're without Brendan Hayden for the rest of the game. What does what changes do you think he made in the dressing room? I think with the deficit, it's not so much strategic as you might think. Probably just more psychological. Almost a you know what, boys? First game, we knew there were going to be some kinks. Let's find a way to work them out. Let's get some opportunities, and let's just start a better path, clean slate for game two. But let's do some good things right now. Telly shot blocked by director off his stick with 15 seconds into the third period. Matt Telly chasing this one down all the way back into his own and Jared Flukinger chasing after him. And what we saw right off the opening faceoff there for the North Lancers, they controlled the puck. They were able to get a good opportunity. Yes, it was thrown away by the Foxborough defense, but it was a fantastic opportunity that they had going into the Foxborough defensive end. And they have another opportunity here. John Gagir able to play it down nice to Jared Flukinger. Flukinger had Warren at the top, went for the, sh went for the shot. I apologize, folks, went for the shot just off the blocker, another shot just wide of the net from John Gagir. And here's where this period, differing from the other two periods, the Lancers, most of the time, during the first last two periods, the Gagir shot right in on net. And Tully trying to bring it out, Donahue there to stop it and play back into his own net. It's Kyle McGinnis sending this one around the boards to Joey Giuliano, the Lancers making it off, a defensive change, Brennan coming on for John Gagir. Giuliano now bringing it up. The Lancers have the numbers on a three on two. Looking to bring it inside the slot. Has it. But Rieger with a poke check to sit that one away. This one passes stick of Sebastian Ricketts down into the Lancer end. You're two minutes into the third period. Still 4 0 Foxborough. Thanks to four fantastic goals, and really two fantastic goals in the later half of the second period. Nice Lancers move by Joey. Lancers able to clear their zone, send it up to Donahue as it sent all the way back into the Lancer end. John Brennan to control it. Off the boards to Del Grasso. It's taken away there, but picked up by Donahue on a fantastic stick check from Dominic Del Grasso. As John Gagir has this one at center ice. We're going to bring this one on towards net. It gets towards the corner. And checked in the boards by Kyle McGinnis. Pat Warden has it. Feeds it out to the top to Billy McCarthy. Has Flukinger down low towards the slot. Tried to play it up to the near boards. And we'll get a nice and call. I mean, at the very least, we've seen, we've seen a couple more adjustments. And I'll give... We have to give the Lancers that. They come out of both intermissions, making plays, and they come out aggressive. They come out a little bit faster. Still maybe not matching the speed of Foxborough, but they're trying to at least make a difference on all sides of the puck. Warden in the faceoff top for the Lancers. He ain't having a rough go of it tonight. Thrown out four different times. He's able to win the faceoff. Bill McCarthy shot blocked by Ronnie McClellan. And here comes Foxborough going the other way with it. It's Kirk Leach already has a goal tonight. Score the first goal of the second period. A shorthanded goal in that. And Gagir and Cross getting a little bit tied up right near center ice. As we'll get another icing call with 11.57 to go in this one. So 11.57 left here in the third period. The Lancers down 4 0 in this one. Patrick Donahue coming into the circle. Posing him with Sebastian Ricketts, who's able to win the faceoff as 
Foxborough controls it. Jack Watts gets it taken away. Now they'll feed it up to Tommy Whalen on a breakaway. Able to play it forward. And Tommy Whalen sliding all the way down as Espen Rager able to grab it. And what a fantastic defensive play there from John Moses. Whalen able to get around him, but Moses blocking him out to make sure he couldn't get to that puck. It's just been a frustrating night offensively for the Lanterns. It's like they have... It's, a, it's almost like the State Farm commercial where they're hanging the, the dollar bill in front of them, and they go to grab the opportunity, and there it goes. It's Foxborough playing it over to the far side. And they'll look to bring it straight up the middle of the ice, and that's something the Lancers have been okay with giving them tonight. They've limited their shots to mostly outside of the slot, but it's coming down the center of the ice. They've mostly been okay with it. Brendan Tully has it, sending it down ice. Just barely getting onside is Matt Tully. Donahue. Tied up on the boards, leaves it for Giuliano, who brings it up, trying to get past everyone. Here he goes. Has Tully to beat. We're going to bring it towards the slot. Look for the toe drag move, but went right off the skate of Matt Tully. Rager will able to block yet another shot. That's 19 saves in the night for the man who last year against the Lancers. Had 52 saves on 57 shots, and he's really showing that same exact thing this year. Fantastic ability. And one thing we keyed in on in his pregame is last year, he loved to play the puck out of his net. We haven't seen that so much tonight. He seemed to have grown as a goaltender throughout all last year. Definitely from sophomore year to junior year, it's a big step in terms of high school athletics. I'm very, very surprised, and it's a great sign of maturity from Rieger. And if you're any team in the Hawk, Canton, Franklin, North Attleboro, King Phillip, you have to be scared when you're facing up against Espen Rager, considering how well he's done tonight. Absolutely. As Giuliano has his puck in the far corner. Tied up a bit there. Giuliano able to play it out towards Flukinger. And Flukinger's done a really a fantastic job in his first game in a Norton sweater as Lorden. Has it in the far side corner. We're going to play back to cross in the slot. That one going just over the bar. Lorden playing this one down ice to cross. Foxborough looking to take a 6-3 lead in the rivalry with three ties mixed in there as Mitchell Director having to play that one and setting it out towards center ice. And one of the big things we saw in preseason from Mitch Rector was his ability to play the puck. And he has a very funny story about why he loves to play the puck so much to come out of the net. As Foxborough brings this one up, we're going to create another opportunity. He has it right in the slot. They'll look for another opportunity. It's shot right in the chest of Mitchell Director. But Mitchell Director's story on why he doesn't like to get deep in his own net. When he was little, when he was playing with younger hockey when he was little, fights and stuff, he hated breakaways. In fact, he hated them so much he'd come out of his net every single time to try and play the puck away. And we saw that earlier when he got his mask off. Came way out of his net, tried to poke check it away. And that is why Mitch Director does love playing the puck out of his own net. He doesn't like breakaways. That one tipped in. Ronnie McClellan getting his second of the night. A tip in front in the third period. Starting just like the first and the second. Foxborough getting the first goal. And Foxborough is leading 5 0 in this one. Perfect example of what Foxborough has been trying to do all night. We saw that a lot in the first couple minutes of the game. Not, maybe not so as much since then, but getting some misdirection in front, trying to shield the view of Mitch Director, and it works there. A little quick misdirection, quick tip, and that's all you need for a goal. So Ronnie McClellan with his second of the night at 5.38 of the third period, and the Lancers now down 5-0. Here in the third period. McCarthy chasing after this one with Kirk Leach. Leach able to get around him, and it's really been Foxborough playing a complete 45 minutes tonight. They've been getting the tips, they've been getting the shots, and for a Foxborough team that before last year, had never made the tournament by reaching 20 points. Has done a fantastic job here tonight, and it looks very much like a team that could contend for the Hawk Davenport division title. Which, okay. is, which is always wide open every year. Always wide open. You have North Attleboro, Stoughton, and Canton, and Stoughton, one of the teams in the Lancers, played maybe one of the craziest games one has ever seen as director able to cover that one up on the 27th shot of the night for Foxborough. But Norton Stoughton last year, one of the craziest games in this team's history. They won 8-5 after being down 5-2 in the third period, came back storming with six third period goals to end up winning for Mitchell Director's very first win as a varsity goaltender.
Cross has this one on the near side boards. He'll play it up, chasing it down the ice as Pat Warden looking for an opportunity, but has to contend with Telly. And Telly really the star on the ice tonight. And he'll take out Pat Warden and break his stick in the process. And a penalty called here. And Espen Rieger trying to go to the bench. Came up just a few feet short, diving as he went towards the bench. And Foxborough will go back on the power play. And when you're up five, death in your Espen Rieger having himself a night. You gotta just love it as Pat Warden coming off the ice, going back to the locker room to get another stick. Jared Flukinger will go to the box. Foxborough on their fourth power play opportunity of the night. One of four so far. First broken lumber of the season, too. And what a way to break it. Brendan Tully came in, came flying in. Uh, We've got a face off on the far side dot. It's too bad our slow-mo uh, instant replay camera hasn't come in the mail yet. Brendan Tully, I mean, that, that right there just illustrates how fast of a skater he is. Coming in so fast, he ends up getting Losing his footing as Joey Joanna looking to take this one up, trying to get something here for the Lancers tonight. But when you're going down so fast and when you lose your footing, you end up breaking a kid's stick, you got some wheels. Yeah. And Telly, a Providence College lacrosse commit. And hard to think of it that hockey is his second sport as Rago will play this puck in his own end. And being a Friar, especially on the rink down there, one of the top teams in the country. Why not? It'd be a fun time. Once again, going for lacrosse is 37 points last year on only his first season with the team. He's coming into his second season in a Foxborough uniform for his senior year as Rager will play this puck out once again, way out of his own net. And just as we said a few minutes earlier, Tim, we wonder that Rager might have been able, that may learn to stay in his own net. He'll, he's come out of his net twice on two rushes for the Lancers. Giuliano tied up on the boards there with Jack Watts. He with seven minutes left in the third period. Watts has it in front. Oh, the centering pass. But off the stick and goes to Matt Telly. 39 seconds, 37 seconds, now 35 seconds left in this third period. Power play for Foxborough. And another big shout for the Lancer. Faithful is the shot right into the elbow of Mitchell Director. And here comes Lorden with a new stick. Coming back to the bench with a new twig. And who's not coming back to the bench, unfortunately, tonight is Brendan Hayden going to the hospital. We hope the best is Everything is all well for him, but he's going to be going to the hospital after his back spasms popping up once again. And that's one of the players for the Lancer that they just don't want to lose, but also they just may want to make sure is okay. John Gagir chasing after this puck. 6.30 left in the third period. Foxborough leading this one 5-0. Thanks on just an all-around performance from just about everybody. Five different Four different goal scorers on five different goals tonight as a penalty to Jared Fugger will run out with 6.14 to go in the third period. And he'll get the puck. Passes it to Tom, passes it to Mikey Whalen. The younger brother of Tommy Whalen, who's seen out of the ice quite a few times tonight. It's McCarthy playing. And back into his own end, goes after Whalen. A tie up on the near on the far side boards. And the Lancer end. Flukinger delivering a big hit right at center ice in open ice as they'll get the puck back on his stick of the red line. The 5'9", 200 pound defenseman getting rocked on a huge hit from Kyle McGinnis. McCarthy looking to play it forward instead taken away by Sebastian Ricketts. Has a man up top, looks for the shot. Blocked. By number one in net, Mitchell Director, Patrick Donahue. However, taking this one up, looking for an opportunity. The shot on net, blocked by the skates. Apologies, blocked by the plaid of Espen Rieger. Lancers 20th shot on the night. The shots have come out of plenty for both teams. In front, the tip. Once again, off the pad of Espen Rieger. Another opportunity right towards the slot. Trickled through the slot. Off the stick of Donahue. As Juliano shot goes just wide. The 
the Lancers chase this puck all the way down the ice. Parker chasing after it for the Lancers. The Sharon prospect. In his second season with the team, turning over his own player, Sebastian Ricketts here with 4.34. Get her going in the third period. Jamie, with a deficit like this in the time of the game, in this rivalry, you might get a little chippy here. And we've been seeing it. Jared Flukiger laying out a few big hits, but Joey Giuliano controlled the near side, boards at his own blue line. We're going to clear the zone, sends it to Jeremy Cross, who sends it up to Tommy Whalen. Whalen able to dangle through the slot, the backhand shot going just wide. And what a fantastic opportunity from Whalen. You got to think, Tim, here, just a little bounces here and there, and the Lancers could very much still be in this, but it just hasn't been their night. Nespin Rager has done a fantastic job as Giuliano's shot falling to the ice goes wide. McCarthy chasing after this one with Sean Kravitz. In the box out, his man gets sent into the boards and we will get a penalty. Boarding the call. And a whole lot of whistles. That's what I meant, Chippy. Create some more intensity for us. And now Billy McCarthy and Sean Kravitz trading some verbal blows. As Kravitz will go to box for two minutes for boarding. Things shorted out. So the penalty there to number nine, Brady Daly, in the box for two minutes. So we'll go to the box for two minutes. Nothing on the penalty side of things for the Lancers. The Lancers will get their second power play, their third power play opportunity of the night. Patrick Donahue goes into the dot for the Norton Lancers. 3.44 left in this one. Basically, you're just playing for pride at this point, down by five. But if the Lancers can get a big power play goal here, that'll be huge for their momentum going forward, and especially in their next game against North Quincy. This is where you make adjustments for the rest of the season. It's like an extra practice right here. McCarthy winds up and fires this one that goes behind the net. Wait, wait. Huge hit. On the receiving end of a huge hit behind the Foxborough. Net, this cross has this one. We're gonna play it off the board geometrically to Giuliano, goes off his stick, and it'll be sent all the way down the ice. He'll bring it back up, 20 seconds into the power play. The Lancers' last chance towards the end of the second period on the power play was absolutely fantastic. Five shots on net as Giuliano has it, shoots wide of the net. We saw this in the Weymouth game as well. Joey Giuliano had some fantastic opportunities. His direction finder just seemed to be off here in the early going of the season. Whalen has this one. Looking to find Giuliano in the low slot, but instead Foxborough takes this away, chips it down the ice, and they'll go for a line change in the back end. McCarthy and Kirkleach going into it in the boards. Halfway through the Lancer power play, only one shot on net so far as the plate up to down here. One of the drawbacks of the Lancer team last season was their power play. And when talking to Coach Thabato about it, he had quite the interesting answer. He said it's not really something the Lancers are really practicing that much. We'll see if they're able to convert an opportunity here as Jeremy Cross dangles right through the legs of Sebastian Ricketts and shot going right into the glove of Espen Rieger. And he very much wanted to play those five-on-five -five matchups. But their power play, even without working on it, these last chances have been absolutely fantastic. They haven't gotten a goal yet, but Rieger's really been standing on his head. Two twenty left here in the third period. Lording going into the dot for the Lancers. And opposing him is Sebastian Ricketts. The junior forward with nine points a season ago. But it's taken away by Tully, and Tully has all plans on making this 6-0. In the slot, the shot just wide. You saw the Lancer fans right behind Mitchell Director ducking out of the way. It's an absolute rocket of a shot from Brendan Tully, but it's John Brennan sending it to the near side to Patrick Lording. Trying to get it through the slot, but Playing the sweeper there is Brendan Tully getting it out of the way and the puck out of play as well. But we'll go to face off. 154 remaining in the third period. Remember, folks, after this we'll post-game interview with the Lancer head coach Jay Thabato 
as well as a post-game wrap-up show as well with me and Tim. We'll go ahead to the Lancer next game against North Quincy, a team who they've never played before. Well, on the other side of things, for Foxborough, they'll play Tri-County in Tri-County's first game of the year. Team was 4-11-3 just a season ago. But Ricketts playing this one all the way down the ice, and that will end Brady Daly's penalty kill. And that will end, my apologies, Brady Day's penalty. Lancers having a chance in front. Lancers sending out some of their freshmen. Jake Bragg out there. But Sebastian Ricketts having it, but offsides is called. The Lancers really using their younger line, their fourth line, using them here late in this one. Jake Bragg, Sherman, and Dercoli. Dercoli with the only goal of the Lancer preseason slate. A fantastic breakaway opportunity against North Adamer. was able to just tuck one between the pads of their goaltender, and he really played fantastic in this game. And they can afford to do that with the depth they have this year. Give the starters some rest. It gets these younger guys some varsity experience. And Matthew Zhao out in the ice for the Lancers. And Zhao, while being a North Lancer hockey player, is also an award-winning violinist. Played with the Boston Youth Symphony Orchestra in the offseason. Sherman controlling this one. Plays it to Giuliano. Giuliano looking to get something going. Pass it back to Sherman. He plays it towards the corner. Less than a minute go to go in this one. Foxborough leading at 5 nothing. It's Connor Cohen, a freshman. Taking this one for the Lancers, playing it back to Sherman. Giuliano tips down the ice. Rager, his hand raised for icing. They'll give it to him. And we're going to face off all the way back in the Lancer zone with 46 to go. Five nothing the score. Goals by McClellan, Leach, Tully, and McClellan once again in the third period at 5:38. And getting in the action is Ben Ricketts, a freshman here, posing Pat Donahue. Donahue winning the face off easily. The Lancers will send it down the ice. Giuliano trying to get something going as a stick is tied up with his skates. As Foxborough controls it with 32 to go in this one. Donahue flipping it off the boards right in front of the Foxborough bench. Picking it up is number 13, Ben Ricketts. As a man of the near side, it's Sean Crabman. That shot goes just wide. Crabman has it back. Shoots it back towards the director, but director able to jump on it. 10.8 to go here in the third period. And Foxborough looking to go home with their first two points of the season, a commanding 5-0 victory over the Lancers. The Lancers at home last year was maybe their best, but tonight facing a very good Foxborough team. And what a play from Brady Daly, the freshman getting his second career goal. Had a goal last season, gets one here tonight. And adding on to just what's been a disappointing night for the Lancers. At 15, at 14.56, Foxborough making it 6-0. It's just salt in the wound for Norton at this point. And a lot of Lancer fans making their way towards the exit as Foxborough will just let the clock run out as they score with four seconds to go. The buzzer goes off and Foxborough goes home with their first win of the season. And they'll take down their rivals by a 6-0 final. Coming up next, we'll have an interview with head coach Jay Thabato. Tim and I will wrap up the action, and then we'll say goodnight from the FSC. The Lancers following to the Foxborough Warriors, 6-0. Stick with us, folks. This is Hockey Night North. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Foxborough Sports Center for Ellison Overtime. I'm Jimmy Blake alongside Tim Crowley. And, Tim, this was just something the Lancers weren't expecting tonight. No, and Foxborough came out and really just shocked them right out the gate. Played with impeccable speed. They were aggressive. They had passion. Knowing it was a rivalry game, they came ready to play. Offensively, they created opportunities. Brendan Tully obviously making his presence felt with that goal in the second period. And everything that could have gone right for Foxborough tonight did. And everything for Norton, vice versa. And Espen Rieger in net for Foxborough, he might have been the player of this game. Yes, we saw Brendan Telly shine in the ice, but this was a 6 nothing game. If not for Rieger in net, it could very well have been 6-4. Absolutely, and this was an incredible effort by him. And it's 
we love watching young players throughout the sport, and especially someone like Rieger, who was a little little shaky last year at times, a little inexperienced as a young pup, showed some maturity tonight and really showed up for Fox Pro. And this is one of the big concerns for the Lancers going into the season. Yes, they had a lot of depth, but not, they haven't really played together. A lot of transfers, a lot of new guys coming over. So I think tonight was just an effort in Fox Pro, just being a team that had gelled and whatnot. But for the Lancers, if they can, throughout this season, gel together and create that bond that Foxborough has, some big things can be on the way. Right, and you can't expect a team like Norton right now to come flying out of the gate with five goals in the first game. They're still trying to learn each other. This is a new, like you said, new era in Norton. Coach Lobato's still trying to piece out who he's going to put where, what offense he's going to try to run, how he's going to make opportunities. Tonight's a huge game for Norton, despite the loss. This shows a lot about how they can compete the rest of the season, what they're going to have to change to be competitive in the TVL. And one of the big things you wanted to key in on here on the post-game show was the forecheck. The Lancers did a fantastic job of being physical in that third period. Absolutely. I mean, when a game gets to 6 nothing, it's going to be tough for a lot of teams to stay mentally engaged and still find a way to compete. I think the rivalry probably had a little bit of intake on that. Um, so still got the fans riled up, a couple of big hits here and there. Um, but, I mean, it gave them something to look back on and say, hey, we can use this as a strength later down in the season. If we have some size on some guys, even if we don't, it's going to rough them up. They're not going to feel as comfortable. They can't just walk right through us. It gives them at least one positive to walk out of here with tonight. And before we look forward to the next game for the Lancers, look at the back of the stats tonight. The shot's just about even, 30-26 in favor of Foxborough. The faceoff's actually in favor of the Lancers, 20-18. But it was really the penalty minutes and the Lancer power play that just couldn't get anything going. And one of the big reasons why they couldn't get anything going was Brendan Tully and Espen Reagan. Right, and these are two big players, like I said, big-time players, big-time plays, and big-time games. And Tully and Riga are certainly up to that standard. Tully obviously firing slap shots, Zdeno Chara-esque from all over the ice. Rieger was standing on his head, like you said. Excellence between the posts. This isn't a game for Norton that you really can go and just kind of like lull your heads. Foxborough is a good team. They have great players. They play in a competitive division. They play in a competitive league. They're a good team. There's nothing really much for Norton to hang their heads about tonight. They played well. They made, There's definitely adjustments to be made, but it's a statement early on. And we saw this two seasons ago with Mark Setterchuk's very first game at the head coach of Foxborough. They got clobbered by the Lancers 4-0 in a game where the Lancers control just about everything. And we're seeing the same thing tonight with the Lancers' new coach. But going into their next game against North Quincy, what adjustments do they have to make? I think definitely offensively, like you said, got to find more ways. Don't put yourself in the corner early on. It's kind of like the when you're in a, it's like a boxing match. You can't come out and let the other guy beat you into a corner. You got to get the puck out of your defensive zone. You can't put as much presser pressure on Mitch as you did tonight get some offensive opportunities and flip the script next game keep the puck in the offensive zone keep up the physicality that's obviously their highest strength and just like I said better just overall I mean the defense was great tonight but there's definitely adjustments to be made better forecheck and I think the biggest thing was especially offensively start winning those one-on-one -on -one opportunities they had the chances tonight like we said earlier don't let them force you to that weak side back end get your strong hand on and get some good shots so the Lancers' next game will be on Wednesday night against North Quincy right here on LSN, the first matchup between these two teams in program history. For Tim Crowley, I'm Javik Blake. For everyone here on LSN, we say goodnight from the Foxborough Sports Center where the Lancers fall to the Foxborough Warriors on opening night by a 6-0 score.